In this video, we'll cover the PLC no response message, which relates to Maple Systems HMIs programmed with EB Pro. I'll discuss what could be wrong and how to resolve the issue. To begin, I have an image of the PLC no response error message showing on the screen. This is the message that you'd see on your HMI if it is not able to communicate with your PLC or controller for one reason or another. Now, there are a number of reasons why this can occur. These mainly relate to an issue with your cabling or your connection settings, addressing in the PLC, or the network configuration that's applied to your HMI. For example, the cable that you're using to communicate between the HMI and PLC may be wired incorrectly. Maybe your protocol that you've selected is not correct for the given controller that you're using. The communication settings you've applied in EB Pro may not match what has been applied in the PLC itself. You may be attempting to reference invalid or unconfigured registers in the PLC. Maybe your HMI IP address or subnet is not set up properly to allow for it to talk with the PLC, or maybe a network cable has become unplugged. These are all common reasons for the PLC no response error message. Now, when we look at the cabling issues, first thing that we will recommend is that you go and review our cable assembly instructions. For example, I have one showing here of the HMI 5000 series connecting to a Maple Systems MLC using a RS-232 cable with a RJ45 connector, and there you can see the diagram with the pinouts. So when you're looking at your cable for communication, make sure to check the pinouts check continuity if you've built it yourself or you can purchase a cable from us and we can also build you a custom cable for your controller. Next you need to be sure of the protocol or communication driver that you're using and that you should use with your controller. Check this using our controller information sheets. We have a long list of devices that we support and look at the recommended settings here. These you'll need to enter into the system parameters settings window in EB Pro and make sure the settings match your PLC and what's been applied there. Next we can look at the addressing. So also in the controller information sheets we have sections in each with accessible PLC memory, register and discrete types of memory and what the HMI can actually support and access. So you need to be sure of which addresses you're pointing the HMI to, making sure that these are supported by the HMI itself. Now having covered the cabling, let's look at an example. Here we have a controller information sheet for a Modbus TCP IP master device showing here. If we wanted to add this device driver to our EB Pro project. We would do that under the system parameter settings window. Click on add a new device and then apply all the settings accordingly. And depending on the controller you may need to review a wide variety of parameters. These will be listed in the controller information sheet. For example in Modbus by default from our HMIs if you try to read an output bit that's 0x the HMI will automatically read a group of 16 bits at a time. And you may not have 16 bits configured in consecutive order in the PLC. In that case, you can set an address range limit if you want to avoid reading memory areas that aren't configured. So this is an example of something that you should check. And these sorts of parameters, again, vary widely by the PLC or controller. Now that we've discussed cabling, protocol, and communication settings, let's take a look at a sample project. The sample project shown here is titled Troubleshooting PLC No Response. You can find it on our website, maplesystems.com. Under the Support Center, just look in Sample Projects. In this project, we have added two communication drivers, one for Modbus RTU, and one for Modbus TCP IP Master. 
These are both talking to one of our MLC2E PLCs. And the application is a simple one where we're reading degrees Celsius, a raw value from an RTD to measure temperature, and a value for degrees Fahrenheit here. We also have a 0x coil which we use just for testing. And we only have these four addresses set up in the MLC2E. And we can take a look now at the running project in VNC. Now you'll see the PLC no response message pop up here and it will continue to pop up every couple seconds. And on this window running on the HMI we are missing some objects. This is common when you have an addressing issue that if any of the objects on the window are referencing an invalid register in the PLC, most likely all of the other objects will disappear. The only exception here is that a toggle switch and bit lamp are still showing. If we go now to our window number 11, this includes only known good addresses in the PLC. Now we can see these objects appear and we're reading the values from the PLC in real time. So what's the difference? Here we've removed the known bad addresses or objects including known bad addresses from this window. Just by doing this, we now see all of the all of this data coming in. Again, going back to the main window, we still get the PLC no response message. We can mute these notifications if we want here using these toggle switches just to keep them out of the way for a second. And again, these objects are missing. Also, we're missing objects here that are pointing to invalid registers. And again, when we go back to our window 11, the data is appearing here, and then after a moment, it starts to appear here too on the other interface. So when we see that behavior, we know generally that it's an addressing issue. Another thing that we can look at is the PLC connection parameters and how if we change the connection parameters here on COM1 or on LAN1 we will get a PLC no response message as well. We're going to show these dialogues now again. If we change the baud rate to a different value and then update the COM1 settings, after a moment we should get a PLC no response there we go. And if we go ahead and correct this, and update the settings again, we can now see these are both moving in unison and we're reading all the data from the PLC again. So the same thing would apply if you set the wrong port number, the wrong IP address for an Ethernet interface, or if your HMI can't communicate on your network, then most likely you'll get a PLC no response message. Now, if you still have questions or you're still struggling to understand why you're seeing a PLC no response message, we've included some more information here in the project on these windows where you can learn about more communication variables. We have things that we've already discussed here like the protocol, communication settings, and so on, addressing, known good addresses. Uh, here's one though, background tasks, which you may not have considered yet. So any alarms, data sampling, or scheduled tasks in your project, any macros, these can all run in the background regardless of which window is showing on the HMI. And so these, if they are pointing at an invalid register in the PLC, could certainly be causing your issue of PLC no response error messages showing on the screen. Other issues may just relate to your network. Maybe your two devices are not on the same subnet. And maybe your PC can talk to your PLC, but your HMI can't talk to your PLC. You think you have them on the same network, well, in that case, I recommend checking out some of our resources and tips here. 
So here we have resources marked with an R and tips marked with a T. So as we discussed, you may want to remove background tasks if they are pointing at invalid registers or potentially doing so. And sometimes it's just simpler to create a test project, a bare bones project with a single bit lamp or numeric object on the screen pointing at one valid PLC register. That can often clear it up whether it's actually an addressing issue or whether it's a protocol or communication settings issue or a networking issue. On the networking side you may use the ping command test the the connection between your PC and HMI and be between your PC and PLC. And another idea here is if your PC can talk to your PLC but your HMI can't run IP config or look at all of your network interfaces how they're configured. Make sure you know which one is in use for talking to the PLC directly. Is it Ethernet or Wi-Fi for example? And then put your HMI into the exact same configuration as your PC has. Sometimes that can do the trick. So you maybe take your PC offline, but you apply the exact same IP address, subnet, and gateway to your HMI, and restart it, see if you get your communication established with your PLC at that point. Now let's take a look at some of the other functionality that we built into this sample project to potentially allow you to troubleshoot in the field or facilitate your operators and administrators doing some troubleshooting in the field if they get the PLC no response error message. Now we already looked at some of the PLC connection parameters, how you can change the values in these registers and then update or apply the new settings using a button or mute the dialog for PLC no response. So we'll take a look at some of these now looking at the project in EB Pro. For a given parameter we have sets of system registers that we can use. For example, COM1 mode is local word 9550. You can look through this project to explore the other ones that we have set up or look in the address tag library in EB Pro and you can even filter there. For example, baud rate you can type in baud and find the register that you need. If an operator enters a value into these registers, then you will need a function to allow the new settings to be applied while the HMI is running. So with that, you would set up a set bit object, in this case, local bit 9030, activate COM1, new communication settings. So you set that on to update those. If you change something about the Ethernet communication parameters, IP address or port, then you'll need a similar function to apply the new settings for that interface. Here we're using local bit 10070 and this will force reconnection for device 4, Ethernet, when IP address or system parameters change online. So we set that on to update that connection. Next, how can we dismiss or mute these notifications about PLC no response? These are toggle switches. For a given device number, you can locate the correct local bit. So the system bit here we're using is local bit 11960. So disable device one device no response dialog. And we do the same sort of thing here for device number four. 11963 is the local bit there. And last but not least, we have two more settings that you may wish to tune or configure if you're still having issues with communication in your network. So if you go into system parameters for a given device, look at the device settings and the communication settings here. You have timeout and turnaround delay. Timeout is how long the HMI waits before it alerts you to a failure to communicate with the controller. And turnaround delay, if you add this, will slow down the polling rate accordingly by a number of milliseconds. So making the HMI wait slightly longer between each poll to the controller or PLC. So in a network with more latency, you may wish to modify these settings here as well.
At this point, we would hope that the next time you run into the PLC no response error message, you have a lot more ideas about how to approach the problem and how to resolve it. If you do have more questions or are still struggling with this issue, we would encourage you to reach out to us at maplesystems.com. I'll leave the phone number below, and you can also write to us at support at maplesystems.com. Thanks for joining us today, and thanks for choosing Maple Systems. Until next time.